Is the future of photographic editing changing? Yes, it is. Today we're going to look at a couple of images using Luminar 4's new AI technology. The first image I'm going to edit is a portrait just to show you how quick and efficient it is. And the second image I'm going to edit will be another landscape, another passion of mine. AI technology is here. Does it replace the art of photography or the art of image editing? No. These are things you have to learn and progressively improve at to make yourself better all round. And the photography field takes years and years and years of practice and you're always learning. The same when it comes to image editing. And this new software, in this case Luminar 4, that's there to assist you and to help you improve your editing. If you take a bad photograph, nine times out of ten you're going to get a bad edit afterwards. The AI replacement sky feature can improve some images and it will speed up a lot of images for architectural photographers, also landscape photographers as well. The software itself is here to help improve your images, but if it's a bad photograph, it's not going to save it. That's something that you have to learn. You have to continually progressively improve your photography, out shooting every day, with your editing, out editing every day. As I say, I use Luminar 4 as a plug-in. The workflow that you see today will be from Photoshop into Luminar 4 and then back into Photoshop because that gets me the style of images that I'm after. But what I'm going to focus on today is how quickly and efficiently Luminar can produce the results. So let's just dive right in. Okay, the first image we're going to look at is this portrait here and quickly in Photoshop, what I've done, brought in the photo, put an overlay blend of the background that I normally use for my portraits and then used Shift-Alt-Command-D and copied it up onto one layer for me taking it into Luminar 4. I'll now go into Luminar 4. Okay, that's us in Luminar 4 now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the looks panel and I am now going to go into the portrait edit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the AI skin defects removal and as you can see there's hardly any defects if any on this model. So I am going to click the AI skin defects removal and to be honest I didn't see much of a difference there. I'm going to boost the amount. The amount does not affect the defects removal. This is the skin enhancer just to clarify that. So I am going to push that slightly around there. Next thing I'm going to do is go into the portrait enhancer. I'm not going to add the face light at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some slight eye whitening to around there. I want the eyes to pop with this image and then I'm going to add the eye enhancer and with this slider it looks as if it's clarity and sharpening but please don't quote me on that. I don't know how they make these. Under the eyes, dark circles removal. Not that there's any, but I'm going to use it just to show you how much it affects the image because I'll show you the before and after before we get back into Photoshop. I am not going to slim the face here at all. Enlarge the eyes slightly. She has big eyes anyway, but just for this video, I'll take it up ever so slightly. Improve the eyebrows. Although they're hidden here and they're quite strong eyebrows, I am going to push it slightly. That should do. Lips saturation I'm going to take up as well. So I'm going to push the lips saturation, the redness of the lips, and then I'm going to darken them. Okay, we don't have any teeth showing. I don't need to use the teeth whitening. The next thing, I'm going to get into the autumn effect. Remember, I haven't used the face light yet. I'm going to go back and do that. The autumn effect, I'm going to push this because I found with Luminar 3 when I was editing portraits, I used the Autumn effect quite a bit, so I'm going to use it in here as well. And we're just watching, we don't lose any detail in the skin around here. Okay, I'm quite happy with that one as well. The Autumn effect, I'm going to edit the mask using a brush. I'm going to use the Erase. And I'm going to take the Autumn effect out of the eyes of the lips and also any detail here. 
So if I push that just here and here and turn off the edit mask. So I'm now going to go back into the face light and just lighten it ever so slightly. I actually see that quite a bit, ever so slightly. So I'll go for around there. I may jump back to it and we'll just see. Right, now I'm going to get back into my AI enhance filters because this video is looking at them. I'm going to push the accent AI and it should bring up some more of the details, which it has really nicely. And then the AI structure, push this and you'll see the background jump there, but the skin hasn't changed. This is where the AI technology comes into its own. This is absolutely brilliant for this style of editing. I'm not going to boost it at all. I'm quite happy with what I have here. Next thing I am going to do, I'm going to put my vignette in. So I'm going to pull a vignette in around there, just to pull the background down. Draw your eye into the model. Last but not least for this image, I'm going to desaturate the image. And as you can see in here, we have the advanced settings and edit mask. I'm going to use both of these. But first of all, I'm going to pull the saturation of the entire image back to around there. And I'm going to pull the vibrance back as well to around there. That's the image coming into its own for me now. This is where I am quite happy. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the blues back. I'm going to pull the woman into the blues back just to darken the image down. Pull the saturation back so we, we have more of a grey background now. And I'm quite happy with that. But I still want the eyes to pop. So what I'm going to do, edit the mask, brush. Still in the arrays. Take the brush size down. And I'm just going to erase the colour, the saturation. I'm just going to remove that and take it back to the original image. So that for me, at the moment, I am quite happy with that. And I'll show you the before and after here. So this is where we started with the image. Quite warm tones. Uh, any defects in the skin, which I can't see, but any there. And then this is after a few quick edits. We ended up with that. That for me suits this image better than the warm tones. And again, it is down to personal taste. What I do now is I click apply. And it takes us back. So here you have the final image now. I'm quite happy with everything it did there. This for me, in a relatively short time, is the image I am after. If I show you the before, where we started, to where we ended up, you can see the difference. That was really, really quick. Probably quicker doing it yourself than actually watching this video. Okay, for the second image, I'm going to show you how the AI tools can revive an image like this. This was shot intentionally with no dynamic range for this video. So the first thing I'm going to do, AI accent, bring up that. Next, AI sky enhancer. And as I've ran through this before, I'm going to push it to its maximum to let you see it working. AI structure. Bring in some structure there. And you can see some artifacts beginning to appear. Some lens spots, which I have missed. So I'll get them once we get back in. For this, I am going to be going back into Photoshop just to show you how the software complements each other and how they can work together. Skies, I'm going to bring back the luminance. I like the moodier skies within my image. I'll touch a tiny bit of blue in there. I don't like bright blues in certain images. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the details ever so slightly. So the small details, the maximum for me, for my images so far, has been 11. Uh, medium details about there and this large details about there. I'm not going to sharpen in here as well. I, I'm not going to add a slight vignette here. I'm going to wait to the end. So you can see so far, just with that, 
me push the accent AI, how much a difference that has made in a relatively short time. So that's the image we brought in. That's the image we have now. Next, I am going to go straight into Photoshop and using the Photoshop RAW editor, just finalize the image. Okay, that's us back in Photoshop. Next thing I'm going to do is copy up the layer, Command and J for me. Then I am going to go into, then I am going to clean up the lens spots that I missed earlier. And any more artifacts that I see, I noticed a few in here, which I'm unsure whether they're flies, birds, or what they are. I'm just clean this up before we go into the final edit. I won't take too much time in this, just for the purpose of this video. Zoom back out. Command and zero. Okay, next, filter. Camera raw filter. There's another lens spot up there that I've missed. I'll get that one once we come back out. The reason I don't do it in here is I don't think it has the same results. So, first thing, bring the sky down. I like drama in my images, so I'm going to bring the sky down just to around there. Yep, quite happy with that. Then I'm also going to bring the foreground down. Turn this texture up on the bottom one. I am then going to bring the exposure down. Watching for any halos that that will create. Push the contrast. Now you see we're getting more and more to the image that I'm after for this. I'm going to push the texture not too far. Yep, so far quite happy with that. Now I'll add a very slight vignette, not too much because I don't want it to be too detrimental to the image and I don't want it to be obvious that it's there. Next, one of my favourite filters, the radio filter. So you can see so far how everything is working, how everything is complementing each other. Photoshop, Luminar, back into Photoshop. You can see the speed that this is happening at, although I am going slightly faster because of this video. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to push the light, and you'll notice that I turned off the overlay there. It's just a preference of mine so that I can see exactly what's happening. Right, I'm then going to go a couple of new ones, just to bring a slight depth in here. Yep, quite happy with that. I actually may turn that one back down a bit, or push the texture. I'm going to push the texture and bring it back to about 20. Right, so far I'm quite happy with that. Next, last two things in Photoshop. It's an autumn scene. This image was taken five days ago. One of the actions I've created for Photoshop, autumn and folder. You can see the colour change there. I'm also going to add a mask to that because I want to bring back the greens. So it's a white mask, so I'm now going to paint in black around 70% and just paint through the green just bring back some of the elements possibly a little too much there paint some of that back in that's a bit better next shift alt command e and last but not least, which combines all these layers together, as you see. Last but not least, I'm going to add my Autumn effect. Now, this Autumn effect is available in Luminar 4. I'm just using my own for this image. So, before Autumn, after Autumn, I'm also going to pull... I'm also going to mask the autumn effect and I'm going to paint in black to bring out back some of the detail here just to help your eyes lead in I'm also going to take that down there and in there just for some of the trees some of the detail and this is quite random it just helps pick out the image so if I 
bring that to full screen. There's the final image now. So you can see how the two softwares work together and complement each other. And it's well worth using them. Luminar 4 works on its own as a standalone application, or if you prefer to work in Photoshop and use it as a plugin as well for Photoshop, it works just as well doing it that way. This will be the first of a few videos showing you some of the elements within the new Luminar 4 software. I'll be looking at different styles of images like composites, like portraits and landscapes and just showing you how to enhance the images themselves. Everybody works differently and as I said previously, my workflow is Photoshop, Luminar, Photoshop. That's how I get the images that I am after to my satisfaction. So I'm quite happy to use the AI technology. I'm quite happy to embrace it. I'm quite happy to replace the sky. I won't claim the image is a photograph, one single exposure or an exposure blend. I'll say if it is a composite. That keeps me fine and I'm happy with that. So hopefully you can see where I'm coming from with the use of this software. I love my image editing. I love my composites. I love editing my landscapes. I love editing my portraits. Everything about the art of photography, from being out in the field shooting to the final edit, that for me is the art of photography. If you've enjoyed this video, big thumbs up always helps me. And if you're not currently a subscriber and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button and check out the rest of the videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching.